Hey everybody, I just wanted to kind of introduce what we're working on today. Um, this is that Imperial Lightning from Forge World that I picked up from somebody at a local shop. Um, it was all busted up. They didn't want to fool with it, so I got it pretty much for steel. Um, although I asked the person multiple times, you know, are you sure you want to do this? But they were very frustrated and I didn't want to see it just go in the trash. I was like, hey, I can probably build some kind of really great terrain out of that. So I, you know, put it on a piece of plastic card um, and I put sand on it, on the base here, um, and I primed it. These are all things I covered in the other uh, videos, but this one I wanted to kind of just quickly kind of run through this piece. So you'll see me kind of jump ahead as I work on this piece uh, from time to time and I'll probably uh, show you, you know, here what the finished piece looks like. And, you know, this is the beginning and then this is the finished. You know, something like that. Anyway, the only thing I've run into with this piece that I kind of want to share with you is that it is warping and it's probably because it's so big. Uh, this is probably over a foot diagonally. It's warping just a little bit where it wants to warp up, especially on this end. So I'm gonna to have to paint this bottom with uh, PVA glue and paint and then seal it to hopefully help flatten this back out just a little bit. I can also use a little bit of heat, like from a heat gun, to just kinda of heat it up a little bit and then straighten it back out and then let it cool. Um, it happens from time to time. It happens way more with MDF than it does with Plasticard. And I thought this was thick enough, it's three mil thick, but because it's such a big piece and there's not a structural piece going diagonally, you know, like this way on the piece, if I had a piece of terrain or something over there, you know, running like in this area out to this corner, it would probably flatten out some. But it's just something you run into with terrain. It's not awful. Um, it wouldn't bother you on the tabletop too, too much, but because I do this all the time, it bothers me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to be painting this and then we'll just walk through the different steps of getting this from, you know, this raw piece to a finished piece um, in, in this video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Hey, it really helps the channel when you like and share and, you know, subscribe to this channel. All of those things help us to grow the channel, grow the studio, and do more projects that are really cool just like this for you so you can kind of see how to do terrain and um, how to do some of the stuff that we're doing in the hobby. And I appreciate everybody that support me now. Uh, there's a Patreon if you want to directly support us financially. And uh, anyway, I just really appreciate everybody that's watching and liking and subscribing. It's really helping me out and helping the channel grow. I appreciate it greatly. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, welcome to You Build Terrain, where we teach people how to do terrain pieces for 40K, Bolt Action, Flames of War, and of course, Warhammer Fantasy, The Old World, which also lends itself to AOS and other things like that. Um, and today we're gonna be working on this Imperial Flyer, which is an old school lightning from Forge World. And I'm gonna be applying the base coats to it. Uh, the base coats I'm gonna, or the paints I'm gonna use as I'm gonna stay in this blue field, I'm gonna start with this navy and move to this middle blue and then do a lighter blue for the highlights. And I'm also gonna use this blue-gray wash in between the stages after this one, but before that one. Anyway, I think that'll help us really make a good looking piece. I will pick out some details here and there, not a lot, but some. 
I'll do some metallics, some red, some other things here and there on the piece, just so it looks nice, um, just like we did with the other pieces. So just bear with me as I walk through this and I'm gonna start with this base coat. I hope this isn't like solid. <laughs> I haven't used this navy blue in a very long time. So let's see if I can get something to come out. And I did, the hard way. It's pretty chunky as you can see. And I spit this tube of blue right out. Um, crap happens in the hobby. Clean up my table just a little bit. Got beyond the, uh, the mat. <clears throat> As you can see uh, in the hobby, of course, the uh, sometimes it's better to clean it up as soon as it happens. I'm just moving some of this gunky stuff off to one side, but if you clean it up right when it happens, you're way less likely to have an issue long-term with the paint. Um, usually if you can get it right in the water, it will not stay. All right, so let's get to brushing on some of this blue. I'm gonna water it down just a little bit. Of course I have, you know, my cup of water. Um, I got a ceramic tile that's it's got a, a, a finish to it, you know, like a gloss finish to it, so you can clean off paint really easy. And of course I have my handy dandy paper towel. And as you can see, I use paper towels in the shop all the time because it comes in handy. All right, I'm just gonna liberally uh, start applying this dark blue to the whole miniature. Now I don't have to be super clean with this. I just don't want it to run anywhere. I might have to put on one more coat of this dark bottom color. Just depends on how it dries. I am thinning my paint a little bit, but that's just so I get good coverage. With your base coat, it's better to be a little thinner than thicker. Um, and with terrain, it's kind of tricky. You're gonna be a little thicker than you would be for a miniature, but you don't want it to be so thick that it's you know not going on everywhere. Now this is resin, but you would prime it the same way you would any other miniature in your, in your hobby. I don't know how much resin you've done. Um, you might have only done plastic at this point, but uh, with the proliferation of 3D printing and so many people using different resin pieces along the way, I assume that you're gonna be around resin. And you can just prime it just like anything else. I do tend to wash it uh, before I prime, I'll actually take a small or old toothbrush, you know, small brush, and I will uh, use a little bit of soap and water, nothing hot. I'll usually use, oh yeah, I'm gonna be careful with this. I usually use um, not hot water because resin will, um, you know, bend in warm water. In fact, if you ever have a piece of resin that's not quite the shape you want it to be, it's a little bit wonky. You can always heat it up in a little bit of water, but you gotta be super careful doing that. Um, but anyway, um, what I was saying is I wash it just to so make sure it doesn't have alcohol or anything else that's gonna resist water, meaning the paint in the long run. And I'm gonna be a little sloppy here. You can see that I'm kind of going around, but I will have to touch everything up. It's better to have it on the miniature itself and touch up the stuff around it than it is not to have it on the miniature. And I'm gonna change this lighting just a bit uh, because I definitely wanna make sure that I'm getting inside of all of this, all the bits and pieces with this base coat. Because like I said, it's easy to clean it back up after if there's a problem on the dirt area. 
Um, I can work back in there. Now, in between these pieces, that would be hard. Um, you know, like I can see like a little piece and I'll probably never get the other colors back down in there, but that dark blue I want on there. And sometimes you're just gonna be in a situation where you're just fighting back and forth and back and forth. You could always paint this piece separate and then come back in and ad adhere it, you know, after you've painted it. But I feel like you're adding a step and a complexity part that you really didn't have to at that point. Um, it's a terrain piece. It doesn't have to be like a miniature and be perfect at all. Um, in fact, it's gonna look a little bit better if it's a little rougher, because in this case, it's been sitting around for a while. You know, crash flyer laying here for a year before somebody came back and started fighting over the same piece of terrain or something. Uh, like I said, it is really important to try to get this base coat on everything you can down to little nitty gritty pieces and stuff really close to the dirt because it's just gonna look better overall if you do it that way. Let's uh, get inside of there. Inside of the tube at the back. Like I said, I might have to do this a second coat. I can already tell that, you know, it's it's a little thin, but like I said, I'd rather do a thin coat twice on a piece like this than too thick of a piece. Uh, but it's gonna be a really dark midnight-ish blue um, because of the, of the, primer that we used, which I just used regular rattle can primer. Um, you know, and some people would say, why aren't you using, uh, you know, like airbrush in this situation? You can, I just prefer not to. Um, I've never really enjoyed the airbrush stuff as much as just brush painting and rattle can, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, I know some guys that build terrain and min miniatures and use an airbrush all day long and they love it and it looks great. So you can do it that way and really get good looking stuff. I just prefer not to. Not saying it's wrong at all. <laughs> In fact, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but I've been doing it this way for a long time and I enjoy doing it. here. And because I'm going to come back and do a second coat, I don't have to really worry about being absolutely exact. I'm just trying to turn this so that I but I don't have to be perfect with this base coat if I know I'm gonna do a second coat just like this.
All right, that's looking pretty good. This is gonna take about 20 minutes or so to dry. I am gonna use a fan or outdoors in the sunlight to dry it just so I can get back to this pretty fast tonight and uh, do this second coat. So I probably won't show you the second coat. I'll be uh, starting the next part of the video with um, the second, you know, the second color, not this base color, but um, that would just be boring. And so, yeah, I'll do the second base coat without you and then we'll come back and do the next piece. All right, I think that's it. Uh, stay tuned and we'll do the rest of this in just a second. All right, <clears throat> here comes the wash. You know, we've done the base coat and then a medium layer. And you can kind of see, I mean, it looks a little striated. It's not like the perfect paint job, but like I said, when this gets finished, um, it'll look just perfect <clears throat> without a lot of fuss or layers of paint. I'm using the Secret Weapon Wash. This one's called Storm Cloud. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to it, not very much, and start my wash process. After this wash, I'll go back with the mid-tone and the top coat with a dry brush just to kind of get the technique that I want to look. Now the storm cloud is kind of a blue gray. We're gonna to try to keep as much bubbles off as we can, but there's gonna be some bubbles no matter what we do. I know you can't really I'm sure I can get the right angle for you to see everything I'm doing here, but this should go pretty fast. Once we get this wash on, we will come back in about 20 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes under good sunshine or fan or some combination of all. And we'll do those two dry brush pieces. pretty fast. You just want a good coat from this. You don't want to miss any spots if you can help it because you'll definitely tell where you missed a spot with washes when you're washing the whole surface like this. You can already see the huge difference between this and where the, uh, the just the second coat is on.
I just need to kind of turn it here and there and hit any spots that I see that maybe have not gotten done by the wash. Everything's looking pretty good. Just making sure here. Petals or runs. All right. That's already drying just a little bit. So you're starting to get a feel for what it could look like. There we go. I'll let that dry and we'll do the next step. <clears throat> okay, so we're on to our next step and I thought I would just review here. We started with a base coat of this dark blue. We went to a top coat of this color. Then we washed with this blue gray wash. And now we're gonna go back in. And this is just one step from that middle color. We're gonna go in with this lighter blue as a dry brush on top. Well, I've got my towel here. Gotta be super careful. that are going to be the highest highlight first and then work into the other areas.
Very well blended. Really happy with that. And it is exactly the kind of color scheme I wanted to go for. Very well blended. Without overdoing it. grab that off white. I'm going to try to get as much of this blue off. The brush. All right, that looks pretty good. Flames of War Ivory.
it'll give me the off-white I'm looking for. It's, granted, this is the Flames of War, but it, it's Bob Vallejo, but we all kind of know that. All right. happy with that. I don't see any other need to effect I want and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and pick out some bits with different colors and we'll go from there. Alright so these are uh, Imperial Guard tanks that I've painted. I've painted them to be for uh, you know a, a planet that's ice and snow and I've used this motif of kind of this, you know, washed out green or blue. <clears throat> it's a little bit toward turquoise. And then I blocked out big, you know, things of color. I did the tracks that way. But you can see on the, on the side pieces here, I actually put this red stripe and um, I put the skulls that were all hand painted, the uh, lettering that was hand painted. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna try to do that with uh, this. So what I've done, um, 
just so you can kind of see, is I've blocked out, just like I did on, on the tank, um, I've blocked out these panels and the color just to kind of give this some style. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put the red stripe like here, and maybe here or here with the number there. And, um, you know, just pick out some things so that it looks, uh, you know, almost matching to the army. It's a little bit different on the blue. You can tell this is way more toward turquoise. This is way more toward like an icy blue. Uh, and I have uh, another tank here. And you can kind of see, I mean, all the tanks are pretty similar, but that's, that's a little different. But anyway, I just thought that would be a nice touch to somewhat mix them, you know, and match them. Um, oh, uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out these skulls in white because that's what I did on the other. There's a few skulls here and there. So anyway, I cheated and I did the black without you. I apologize. I got my uh, creative flow going and, and said, oh gosh, you know, I need to do this. So anyway, I need to go get my tile and we'll be ready to go. Okay, I am back with a tile and I think the first thing I'm gonna do is to, I'll, I'll show you the colors I'm using. I probably won't use this chocolate brown. I'm probably gonna use some mixture of this yellow with the white ivory. This is ivory, this is kind of a leather brown. I'm gonna mix them together to do my base coat for my white and then do this and then step it up one more to pure white. But this is what I'll, I'll do for like the skulls and any of the white areas that I wanna do. And then this is the red. It's just called deep red. It's the base coat for the red. And then I'll use a bright red to go on top of that. I'm just gonna pull that out now. Um, oh gosh, I don't see it there. One momento. All right, so this will be my red mix. Is This is the bottom. You can see the step up for the reds. This is the deep red. This is Carmenian red. This one's called hot or fire red. And then this is hot orange. That's really the color I'll go for. Not sure I'll go all the way to orange depending on how it looks. I might do a 50-50 mix of these two. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you what I was thinking color wise and what I'd be using today. But like I said, I'm gonna start with the white and probably what I'll do is I'm gonna mix 50-50 this yellow with the off-white or the ivory from Game Color and do my base coats with that.
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and apply the paint onto this surface so that we kind of get a, a, a paint down and then we're going to add some uh, snow to it because I want this to go for a snow terrain board and uh, you know it'll it'll kind of match the other stuff but it, it won't be the same terrain base down here. We started with the same brown but we're going to use some different colors. I want to use uh, I'll show you right quick. I'm going to use these three blues. This is the darkest, this is the mid, and then there's this really light tone. And then I'll use a white on top of that. And I'm going to do that with a dry brush technique or a brush technique so that we kind of get streaks and we get good coverage. And I'll be doing a couple of different brushes today. Uh, I'm going to use my half inch uh, flat brush and then my, my dry brush that I have. And last but not least, we'll be using a white PVA glue to get down the snow. And I've bought just indoor outdoor snow, um, but I'm gonna mix this with the glue so that you kind of get the texture that you're looking for. There's also a finer snow than this, but I kind of want it to be chunky on this piece, but you can buy the, the snow products that other people have that's a little bit more fine, or you could take this and mix it with like a white sand and it would turn out pretty good too. But the trick is to use PVA with it because it'll make it fluffy. Um, anyway, let's uh, get into this so that we can start, uh, you know, painting up the uh, miniature. Let me adjust my camera here. Okay. So I'm going to start with this darkest color, which is kind of this midnight blue. You can see here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this half inch brush. I'm going to put a little bit down on my tile. I don't know if I'm going to add water to it or not. I need to see how it lays down. And um, once I see how it lays down, we'll, we'll start to... I'm just going to use it without water. Yeah, it's going to need a little bit of water. I need to flow just a little bit. I want to keep that brown undertone, but be able to get these darker colors mixed in. So here, let me add some light to this just so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, that's what I wanted. What I'm gonna do is, I don't have to do this everywhere, but I'm gonna streak this blue on, kind of cover up any areas that I might've gotten the paint for the terrain piece onto the ground with this dark blue. Adding just a little bit of water to that dark blue. I'm just going in and kind of working around any of these pieces. Anywhere that the gravel gets up on the terrain, like here, there, I'm going to add that dark blue to it. Try to make this as organic as possible, but I do want it to be kind of long streaks of color. I know this is hard to see where I'm working at right now, but it's up underneath the plane. Need a little bit more paint. When it's really gravelly like this, you've got to have um, a lot of paint, even though you're watering it down and stuff like that. If you don't use enough paint, it's just gonna be brown still, you know? It's because it's so rough of a texture. All right. Keep bumping the camera. I apologize. I'm trying a new camera angle, and um, 
I think it's better for the viewer, but we're testing. <laughs> just a little bit. Put that paint away. And these are just little paint pots uh, that I got from the hardware store. These paint pots were usually either very cheap or free. Sometimes people bring them back and uh, it's just a sample color pot. Uh, I've always found it pretty easy to find those on an oops rack or you know, asking if anybody's brought any back at the hardware store. Uh, I usually can pick those up for under, usually under $10, but sometimes for five or six, uh, pretty easy. Uh, granted, that's today's numbers and it might change next year, but you know, at least you get an idea of what it costs uh, to pick up a little pot of paint like that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move to this middle tone which is a little bit different blue. And I'm gonna go back in over the top of the last color. But I'm not gonna, I am gonna use wet paint again. And I am just gonna go in, like I said, I'm gonna try to be streaky with it. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about as I do it. This is that lightest color. You can kind of see it's kind of a, a gray. And I'm going to use it to dry brush on top of the miniature here. I'm not really going everywhere with it. Here. 
All right, as you can see, I kind of got that uh, light gray all over it. And streaky again, you know, I kept it pretty loose. And now we're gonna come back with an off-white. Okay, so now I have the off-white, which is just an ivory kind of color. I'm definitely gonna dry brush and kind of do it lightly. heavy anywhere on the miniature but definitely hitting those spots where the gravel is up on the miniature all right there you have it that looks pretty good all right and then i'm going to come back with a pure white but this is going to be really light like I do not want to do very much with pure white at all. Um, just the highest of highlights and light, light pressure with my dry brush. Now what you can see is that all these layers of paint kind of working together, kind of give us a frosty kind of look to the ground looks pretty cool with the plane makes sense for the plane all right now last step here is I'm going to mix some of that snow with PVA glue and I'm just gonna put some PVA glue out on my ceramic tile and mix a little bit of the paint uh, the, the off-white paint with it tiny amount tiny tiny amount I just don't want it to be not a color, right? And I'm going to mix that up and then add the snow to it. Because that, that glue will dry pretty much clear. And if you add just a little bit of pigment to it, because you're going to undercoat first where the snow would go, And with this color in it, it'll make it pop out even better. I'm going to try to be as organic as possible. Sorry about clicking the phone again for the camera. So this undercoat going where the glue and stuff will be is really a great effect when you're doing snow. All right, now I'm going to come back with just a little bit more glue in these areas. Put just a little bit more glue out. And now what I'm gonna do is just go back into these areas, kind of build up where the glue would be. And I don't have to have it exact to where the paint was. It's actually better if you leave the paint just around like in this spot here, you can see, I'm not gonna try to cover the whole undercoat white with it, but a good bit of it. Almost done here, just a couple more spots that I'm gonna work into. Now, I'm going to rinse that brush out, and you have to be really careful to make sure that you really wash your brushes out when you use PVA glue like that, because you will come back to a completely covered up. Now I'm doing this on this um, 
on this green table. So what I can do is I can just sprinkle this out and then I can pick up, you know, what doesn't stick. I can put it back into my pot that I'm shaking it out of. And you know, we're covering up a little bit more than what the glue was, but that's okay. This will just make sure that it gets stuck on to what it needs to be stuck on to. All right, let's give it a second there to dry. You can kind of see I've covered it completely up. And what I can do is I can put just a little bit of snow on the actual figure by taking the paint glue mixture and just kind of draping it over a couple of places here where the snow would catch, like on the tops of things. Rinse that brush out again. I'm gonna take that snow again and I'm just gonna splatter it right on top of where I put that glue. And just let it sit there. Now when I let this sit, I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll shake it off. So it'll get good, nice and stuck. Okay, our 10 minute wait is over and we're going to Shake off the snow and just make sure that all the loose snow gets off. We'll put all that back in our container, but just take a look at that. You know, that looks pretty good, man. Looks like icy snow right on top of our terrain. All right, that should be it. I'll take some great photos and that'll be the end of the, the video. Thanks for hanging in there. Bye.